everybody. I'm Cassidy, one of your Indianapolis Colts cheerleaders, and you're watching the Believe in Colts podcast. Welcome back to Believe in Colts. I'm Lawrence Warren. With me, as usual, is my guy, Donald Thomas. Donald, the Indianapolis Colts let the Tennessee Titans in their house, and they beat them up. Dude, they out physical a Mike Vrabel offense. What were your initial thoughts after the game? This is a classic divisional matchup, rivalry, you name it, whatever you want to call it. Anytime it's a divisional game, it's going to be physical. Uh, the Colts came to play. They knew what the uh, what the agenda was, and they, they they met it. They matched it, and they uh, they won, and and they won, and it was physical. And I love seeing physical football games. Absolutely. Before we get into it any further, I just want to remind everyone that Bet Online is still your number one source for all your betting needs. Get the latest odds, lines, and matchup reports for baseball, boxing, golf, NFL, and more. Bet Online continues to be the fastest and easiest way to place your wagers, including live betting and your favorite casino and card games available to play right from your phone. Head to the website or use your mobile device to sign up today and get in on the action. Remember, use promo code BELIEVE, that's B-L-E-A-V, to receive your 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit. Bet online, where the game starts. Well, I mean, there's two major stories in this game. Well, three, really, if you want to look at it. And we'll get into all three of those here in just a moment. Um, the first one, however, I really want to talk about, and we got to get dive into it. I mean, Zach Moss, the running back, on the day where Jonathan Taylor comes back after signing a four. $15 million a year contract extension goes out there and puts on a career game against the number one run defense in the NFL. They haven't had allowed a 100 yard rusher since week one of last year, right? Holy cow. And he goes out there and drops 155 yards on the ground and two touchdowns. What are your thoughts, man? I, I I know that you're an offensive lineman. You love that in nitty gritty stuff, guy. Yeah. Let's hear it. <laughs> hats. Well, first and foremost, hats off to Zachary Moss. I mean, you talk about you know uh, understanding the task at hand and understanding the situation that's unfolding right in front of you, and you being you know the player that you know that you are and going in there and taking care of business, saying I don't care about any of that. I'm going to still prove that I'm the guy. Um, you know. From an offensive lineman standpoint, I don't care who's back there. We're going to block our butts off, right? So it doesn't matter if it's, you know, a guy we just picked up off the street uh, during the week and he doesn't know the plays. Like, we're going to block for him. So the blocking didn't change up front. We just want to see guys eat, get yards, 100-yard 100 rush, 100, 100 rushers in a game is, is kind of what we, we get off on. So, but, you know, Zachary Moss, he met the task at hand. He understood what was 14 minute hours a year. Okay. Start running back, turn back. Okay. You know, like they're going to run the offense through J JT. Okay. Well, I'm about to show you that I'm still the guy and you can't take reps from me. And uh, hats off to him because he came out to play yesterday and God Lee, he came out to play. Oh, yes, he did. And, you know, both of us were talking about, and a lot of, a lot of national media was expecting Jonathan Taylor to be walk right in after two games of practice. Right. And just be the, the starting workhorse. And we both were like, you know, He's not going to get that many darn carries. He's got to work his way back, right? I think he had six carries total and like a catch, right? Six carries for 18 yards. Yeah, yeah, which which is fair for, for his first game back, only two practices. Yeah. I'm good with what, what I saw from, from him. But Zach Moss right now is third in the NFL in rushing. Third, right? And this is a guy in Buffalo that, you know, Buffalo fans was like, we drafted you to be that guy and ain't that guy, but I think it's just the wrong idea. I mean, Buffalo was more of a pass-first team. You know, they don't hand the ball off. The Indianapolis Colts, they love handing the football off. Their offensive line is built for that. They're built for that run game. And, you know, right now, even with an offensive mind and pass happy, uh, in my opinion, you know, uh, you know, pass to score, run to win is what Shane Steichen likes to say. Well, he ran to score and ran to win in this game, and Zach Moss really carried that load. What? But here's the thing. What happens with Jonathan Taylor now? The, Zach Moss is, like I said, third in the NFL in rushing right now, and Jonathan Taylor, you know, is just signed that big contract. 
where where do the Colts go with this situation? Well, they got issues now. Like, you know, up, uh, the front office has some serious decisions to make. Um, coaching staff has some serious decisions to make because Jonathan Taylor is going to – he thinks that he's going to be getting the ball, right? I'm getting $14 million a year. I need the ball. I'm getting the ball. How do you do it, right? You got to start splitting reps. You got to start working JTN slow, right? He has six carries, six touches um, yesterday. Maybe he gets 10, right? But at the end of the day, you have to figure out, like, how do I balance this? Because I have a guy that just had got 165 yards rushing on 23 carries against the number one ranked uh, rush run stopping defense in the league. You don't put him on the bench. Mm-mm. It just doesn't happen like that. So how do I how do how do we figure this out? Um, you know, I would hate to be the coaching staff, <laughs> honest to God, truth, because now, and I would hate to kind of be Ursay in, in the GM because now you got a real problem on your hands because you had a guy that was showing promise and he could back up JT. Now you got a guy that's showing that he's the guy, he's a starter and he can start on any NFL team with a performance like he just showed yesterday. So it can cause an issue for now you could lose another running back after the season. Cause he's disgruntled. If you take his reps away and he's shown that he could be a, a good running back and there's going to be some teams that would can use him. Right. And so you might be back to square one. If JT doesn't look good this year and he doesn't show he's worth $14 million. So you have an issue at hand, but um, at the end of the day, it's a good problem to have in, in, in the case of the running backs. If JT comes back and plays well, I just don't know how you're going to chop this one up and start, you know, divvying up reps because you got to give, give a guy $14 million. You're not going to not use him. No, absolutely not. Now the Indianapolis Colts, uh, the way we got Zach Moss was a trade with Buffalo Naheem Hines for Moss. Mm-hmm. And uh, right before we traded Naheem Hines, we gave Hines six and a half million dollars a year contract, three year contract extension. Uh, do, do the Colts, try to do that do, do you put that much money in the in the in the running back room do you offer Zach Moss you know a a, a, a fair uh offer and just see if he takes it or or do you you know just let him go at the end of the year without even giving him an uh, an offer i mean that's that's the problem right i mean i don't i don't see you giving having 20 million dollars in, in in one room a year at running back like that's incredible to me like you don't see that you won't you really don't see i don't think i've ever really seen that before um in a situation like that so i really feel like the decision's already been made jt's our guy we show that we're giving him 14 million dollars a year um unfortunately zach moss is a good player if he continues to play the way he's playing this year you try to work something out but realistically i don't think that he's going to stay for six million dollars if he's if he's if he's tearing it up like the way he's been tearing it up and showing he's versatile he can do a lot of different things. That's going to be a tough decision. That's going to be a decision that he's going to have to make. Um, personally, I don't feel like you should put all that money in one room at running back position because it's so fragile that you can have $20 million sitting on the bench or in the in the, in the training room at one point, and now your, your franchise looks crazy. So, you know, you know, I'm just saying, like, and in, in, in the Colts really don't have a lot of wiggle room to make those kind of errors, right? And it's that's tough. That's why guys get on the GM so much. It's like he's got to make some tough decisions. Right. This is like this is a tough decision for you to make and hope you make the right make the right one. But I don't see this being the right decision if you try to keep both of them. I would love to keep both of them. Don't get me wrong, but pay the man if you're going if you're going to keep them. But you already paid the other man before you saw, you know, you put all your trust in him. So it's like he might he might not be here next year if he continues to play well. It's sad to say, but you ain't gonna keep him for cheap because he's seeing he's seeing guys. He's seeing Saquon Barkley get, you know, 10, 11, 12 million dollars. And he's missing games, and you've seen all these other guys they are getting paid, and they're not doing half of the stuff that he's doing. He ain't staying for $6 million, and I wouldn't if I was him either. You know, we also have another another thing that we got to discuss on the offense, and that's obviously Anthony Richardson, you know, uh, came into this game, first couple drives, 9 of 12, 98 yards, you know, passing, looked good, passing the football in the pocket, uh, was moving around. Uh, things of that nature look much, much more accurate than he has in past games. But then on designed runs, second time he's been hindered on a designed run, and now he's possibly out for a month or more. Um, is there is there worry now at this point with Anthony Richardson? Is 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 he injury prone? Is it something that the uh, the play calling maybe maybe uh, when he does get back kind of pull the the 
the quarterback design runs don't run those nearly as much. What does Shane Steichen do going forward with this situation? Well, first off, I'm going to, from my situation, I'm going to take the injury prone tag and throw that out the window. Um, you know, he's, he's human and you take hits like that. It's only a matter of time. And I told you, I told everybody when we talk about him running the football from week one, that you don't want him running the football consistently because this, these things are going to happen. Mm-hmm. And, you know, guys are going to want to tee off him. He's a big dude coming down that field. He's not like a receiver coming. Like he's not like, you know, like a small running back. He is intimidating. And so when he comes out that backfield, guys are like, I got to get my shot off on him. And there's multiple guys coming in and getting their shots on him. And, you know, like he's going to take a brunt of hits in his career. Do you want him to have to intentionally go and take those hits? Or do you want when he has to run, it's because nothing's there and he's just doing, trying to do something smart with the football. So, um, yeah, going forward, he's going to have to learn um, how to slide, number one, right? How to throw the ball away, number two. Um, but also from a coaching staff, listen, if you brought this guy in to play quarterback, let him be a quarterback. He's going to, he, he has the natural ability to run the football. Let him do that secondary, but let him be a throwing quarterback. And, and, and honestly, like if you set the offense up to where we spread it out, the middle of the field should be open sometimes for him to get six, seven, eight yards in a run and slide and, and be safe with it. Instead of us trying to run QB design runs, we're running QB power and we're running inside zone or outside stretch plays with our quarterback. It's like, it's crazy to me that you have, you're putting so much faith in a guy for your franchise for the next possible five, six, seven, eight years, hopefully. And you're doing this to him and putting this workload on him at such a, at such an early stage in his career. I get it. He is a physical specimen, but he's also, uh, a, he's also a regular person too. And you take those type of hits constantly and guys, I'm telling you guys are trying to tee off on him. They are. And so like, you have to have that in the back of your mind. And so I don't know if they're not realizing that, but this is what happens. And now you're going to be missing your starting quarterback, your franchise guy for, let's call it six weeks. Let's just be real with it. Cause this is throwing arm all the above. Like he, you ain't putting him back out there if he's not a hundred percent or close to whatever the hundred he's going to be for the rest of the season. And you have to look at it from a standpoint of, are we going to see Anthony for the rest of the year? If things don't go right for the Colts. And I hate to say that, but if they're coming, if they, he comes back and they're, have a losing record, you're going to throw him back out there. Right. Well, like you have to, you, have, you just have to think about those things too. Like if he missed, I know we got a bye week coming in there. So it might just be three, get whatever it is. But if it's not, if it ain't right, if things start falling apart, like he comes back and he's not all the way healthy. Now you look bad from a training room st- uh, standpoint, from a coaching standpoint, from a front office standpoint. And so it just kind of makes it seem like, are we taking care of this guy the right way? Well, I mean, you kind of look at it on the opposite side, too. Gardner Minshew came in this game uh, and played a, a really good game as well, right? He was 11 of 14, 155 yards, no touchdowns, but, you know, no interceptions. Gardner's 3-0 and walking into games and playing, whether he's starting or he's coming in, coming in for an injured Anthony Richardson. What if? What if, you know, over the next four to six weeks that Anthony Richardson's out, say it's six weeks, what the Colts end up five and one during that stretch, right? Do you take Gardner Minshew out? I mean, you wouldn't think so, right? I mean, you're winning with the dude. Uh, that's that's the thing. And now at this point, Gardner's on a one. Gardner's on the last year of his rookie contract, right? When he was drafted by Jacksonville four years ago. What do the Colts do here? I mean, you got a rookie contract on the first year of his contract. Do you go ahead? And I understand Gardner's playing very well right now. And there might be teams out there, and Gardner's probably thinking this too. Hey, you know, I might be able to be a starter somewhere out there in the league. I'm not saying that Gardner's a top 15 quarterback in the league, but would you offer Gardner, like, soon, maybe, you know, a a little bit of an extension, a a couple-year extension while you have your, your future quarterback on a rookie deal? Uh, give him six, eight, ten million dollars a year for a couple of years, and and that way you have absolute security at the backup position, which is, in my opinion, the most important backup position on this team, right? I mean, so uh, is is that something the Colts should do? Is that something that they should look into, maybe? 
give the backup quarterback $10 million a year? Well, eight, six, eight. The it's Colts a, have done it before. I know they have. I know they have. And, and it was recent. Um, mm-hmm. You know, but that was a different story. I feel like that was, uh, you know, that was, you know, when you had Andrew. Andrew was a perennial quarterback when he was at the peak of his career. Um, I don't think you have that situation here where, um, you know, that's a decision that Gardner Minshew has to make and, and, and he has to bet on himself. If he's playing well, him and his him and his agent, they're going to talk about it. They're going to hear chatter out there. There's 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 a lot of open quarterback um, spots that are going to happen after the season, um, and Gardner can slide into a Minnesota, or Gardner can slide into you know, um, there's he could slide into a uh, there's 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 a few spots that Gardner can slide into. Um, I think and be a starter at next next season if he plays well. If you think that Anthony's your guy, then I think that you try to go and get, you know, another veteran backup quarterback. But that's a decision that if you lose Gardner because it's a decision that he's making on his own, he doesn't accept it, that he doesn't want the, the extension or what have you. Um, but, like, I just don't – you don't – I don't know. I mean, Colts are in a tough spot. They're in a tough spot running back and quarterback. Mm-hmm. But you, but but this is why you, you get insurance, right? It's, it's good to have a backup that can come and come in and play because things like this happen. So I don't know. I think Gardner, um, he just has to continue to play well. You know, he's not going to – I don't see Gardner lighting up and having, you know, 300-yard-plus games back-to-back consecutively and throwing for four-plus touchdowns a game. That's just not what he's shown yet. But he's shown he can come into a game, um, whether it's during a game or he's a starter coming in to, for the week and he can he's, he's a professional, he can play and step in and manage a football game. And that's right there will get you paid. So, you know um, – he keeps the turnovers down. He's managing football games. He's not lighting it up, you know, throwing for 300 yards plus. But, you know, he's he's a, he's a quarterback where we feel comfortable. It's like there was no panic, right? I mean, you hate to see someone get hurt. He's grabbing his shoulder. You hate to see him walk off the field. You hate that, right? But you also are like, all right, cool. We got Gardner coming in. We know we're going to be all right. It's not like we – like the previous years where when, the, when those backup guys come in, you're like, there it goes. There it goes. Absolutely. And you know what – uh you know, kind of retrospect 2020 vision this time four months ago to think that the Colts would have this kind of problem, right? Where what are we going to do with the excess amount of talent we have at the quarterback and the running back position at the end of the year? That's something we weren't even looking at. We were looking at, you know, a lot of people were like, oh, this is a this is a tanking season. The Colts are only going to win four games. Well, Colts are already three games win in five weeks. Right. And it's because we have excess talent at quarterback. We have excess talent at running back and, you know, other positions as well. So, you know, that's a good thing to be in, Uh, even though it is a problem for, you know, the front office. It's a good thing overall for the Indianapolis Colts and and for the fans. Um, Let's switch over. Look at the Indianapolis Colts defense in this game. Holy crap. The Colts held Derrick Henry who historically has ran very well over the last few games against the Colts, held him, and I kid you not, this is something you're not used to hearing, about 3.3 yards a carry. He had less than 50 yards rushing the football against the Indianapolis Colts. Uh, This front seven for the Colts and Zaire Franklin and and, and that defensive line really Baller. Baller. That's all Mm -hmm. I'm going to say. He makes plays when it's time to make a play. I already know he's going to be somewhere around that football. I mean, yesterday I was watching – actually, uh, Gary Brackett was watching – came over my house, we were watching the game, and um, he was talking about Zaire. And Zaire's a ball – I mean, like, if you really watch him, like, he keeps his shoulders square to the line of scrimmage. He 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 He's 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 shifty. He gets around guard. That When the guards try to get up to him, he's coming downhill. I mean, the dude's balling. I mean, he's going to get paid. Like, he's going to really get paid. He's a good dude. I talked to him a little bit, but um, he's like he he is, in my opinion, the leader of that linebacking core. Like he when it's time to make a play like you like you're looking for him, like you're looking for him. And the thing is, like when when um when I when I when I heard that um um what's his name was going to be out. Um, Shaquille. Yeah. Shaquille. Right. Um, I was like, oh, OK, well. We could have issues at linebacking core. We might, we may or may not. Guys got to step up. Zaire stepped up, 
And that front four up front, they stepped up too, man. They played big yesterday. They were physical. And when you have someone like a Derrick Henry, who Derrick Henry's saying is you can't let him get going because he's not shifty to where he's going to like make a move and then like, you know, he has bursts. Like Derrick Henry's like momentum building. You got to get on him. And so they were physical at the line of scrimmage, getting off blocks, shedding blocks, hitting them, coming downhill. Linebacking core knew what the task at hand was. You got to be physical with, the, with this guy. You can, and once he gets around that edge and he gets that hand out and he has momentum, he's a big dude. And he's bigger than, than, than if you had never played against him, he's bigger than you expect. You know, and so the Colts knew what the task at hand was. That we've seen him a lot over the course of the years, just with being in the same division. Um, but you already know, like this is going to be a physical game. This they they knew they was going to fit. Well, this is like, this is this is it. Like they were beat up after this game. I guarantee you, someone went home and laid down on that couch and were like, "Oh my god, mm -hmm. I'm glad I practice tomorrow. I need to get in an ice bath. I need a massage because I laid it all out there because this is what's going to take to win divisional games. And this defense yesterday, boy, did they show up." Oh man, talking about physical and and needing rest. Uh, Ryan Kelly was was talked to after after the game in the locker room, and he's like, "Man, this was one of the more physical games that we've played. I'm I got bruises, you yeah. know." <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, that, and that's coming from an offensive lineman, right? Yeah. And that, yeah. <laughs> you don't you don't like like you'll get you'll go through games when you like when I played, and you'll go you'll you'll go through a game or two, and you'll be like, "Oh, I'm cool after the game. I'm I'm ready to go out." Like you know what I'm saying? And then like. There were games like, especially back early in my career when I played in Miami, we played the Jets. And it was, when I say I felt like I was in a car collision, front head on car collision after the game. And like, I, I would go home and I would just sit there and be like, what just happened? Like, whole body hurting. Divisional games, I'm telling you, it is different. It is more physical sometimes than playoff games because they're so important just to get to the playoffs. And these guys yesterday, if you, I guarantee if you were at the game and you were up close, you were like, hmm. I felt that one in my bones on that hit because they were just, you know, but that's what's going to take to win these games. Just like next week, we got to have the same intensity and the same physical play because, you know, we will talk about that. We'll get into that. But, you know, you got to you set the tone for the division and set the tone for the game early. And the Colts did that on defense. All right. One last thing I want to discuss before we get out of here. I, I do want to say I did pick the Titans to win. You picked the Colts which is good for you. Good Thank for you. you. Thank you. I picked the Titans to win because our secondary is so banged up and thin, right? Mm -hmm. And and DeAndre Hopkins, boy, he lit that secondary up, man. Eight catches, 140 yards. The man was doing everything under the sun. But, you know, I didn't expect the Colts also to run for almost 200 yards and eat clock. Uh, <laughs> yeah. But with DeAndre getting that much, is that still a worry for our secondary moving forward, or you just got to chalk it up to it's DeAndre Hopkins? We talked about this before we started recording. Some guys are just going to get theirs, period. Like, there's different level of players, you know, when you're playing this game, and he's one of those guys where you forget about him, you can't forget about him. Like, D-Hop is still D-Hop. He's still explosive. He's still electric. And so he's going to get his. It's about containing the others, right? Like, it's like no different than basketball. LeBron's going to get his 30, 35 points or whatever. You got to contain everyone else because the score, the final score is a hundred and something to whatever. He only equivalent, you know, he only, you know, equates for 35 of those points. I got to contain everybody else. I got to contain D hop. And what they did was they can like, they contained everybody else. You contain Derrick Henry, you contain all their, the, the tight ends, you contain their other receivers. D hop's going to get his one man can't beat us. So what we have to do, we got to get after the quarterback. We got to be play physical there. Right, so that he doesn't have time to sit back there and throw. He's going to get his balls up, and D Hop's going to go get it. But everyone else, you just have to contain, and they did a good job of containing everybody else. And you know, quite frankly, here's the deal, man. Listen, this is the NFL. This is professional football. Guys got to step up. Period. I'm gonna keep saying that every week because, like, we, we have to talk about the secondary, whatever positions being banged up, whether it's O line, secondary, D lines, linebacking core. Whatever it is, like, but when someone else is, if you're on that roster and you're suiting up, I expect you to step in and step up, right? Like next man up mentality. And so these Colts right now are scrappy. You know, they 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 hear the talk, the chatter. They stay, they heard what the predictions were. They know what it is. And so like, no one's dumb here. And they came, they're coming out and they're coming to play. And I think some like the, the league still not taking, in my opinion, not taking them seriously. But if they win and they beat an, uh, a, a perennial team. 
the league's got to be on notice. Yeah, absolutely. Um, this past week uh, against the Titans, both of our rookie cornerbacks were the starting outside corners, right? You had Juju out there, and on the other side, you had the seventh-round pick, Jalen Jones. Mm -hmm. uh, it's not ideal to have something like that, but, hey, they're getting game experience, which, you know, long-term, I guess, is going to, you know, pay dividends further on down the season it goes. So um, that's that's a good thing. That's something to, to look good for, um, considering we got a win with both those guys sitting at our outside corners. That's that's always a good good situation. Absolutely. All right. I think that's going to do it for our breakdown of the Indianapolis Colts manhandling the Tennessee Titans um, this past Sunday. And this was Believe in Colts brought to you by Bet Online. I'm Lawrence Owen. That was Donald Thomas. And as usual, go Colts. Go Colts, baby. Do you believe? 